Everyone wants to backtest their trading strategy, but nobody wants to verify that it is correct using proper mathematics and statistics. Well, in this video, what I'm going to do is I am going to explain proper backtesting methodology, how you should go about looking at your trading strategies through the lens of poker. Let's start with this idea of an entry signal. When should you enter into a trade or a hand of poker. Well, what I have here is a simulation of pocket aces. Effectively, that is your entry signal. What we're going to do is anytime we see pocket aces as our whole cards, we're going to buy in and we're just going to continuation bet through the flop river and turn. And if we were to do this against five other players that bet in that exact same capacity and we flip them, this is what our equity curve would look like. If we played 200 games, we would have positive expected value. If we just bet in that capacity against five players, we would make money. There is positive EV with this strategy, and that is just using pocket aces as our entry signal. Instead of pocket aces, consider some sort of moving average crossover or any other trading signal, and you have a bridge from trading to poker. We're looking for an entry signal that produces positive expected value. We can decompose this expected value into the probability that we win or lose and our average winnings or losses. And what you'll see is if we are profitable, then we are going to have a PL distribution that outweighs on the winning side, the losing side. And that is exactly what it means to have positive expected value. So we found a profitable trading strategy. We just will buy in to the poker hand anytime we have pocket aces. And if we do this, statistically, we're just going to make money. So let's use this signal in the live markets. Let's trade live with this pocket aces signal. Well, what happens? Clearly, we're not accumulating any wealth here. We actually have negative expected value. What happened? Well, in reality, the PL distribution that we're going to realize from the live markets or when we play poker in reality isn't going to resemble that of our back tests or any sort of unconditional probability distribution that we simulate on. And what I mean by that is if we take a look at this example here, this is only going to be the case for static betting. Nobody is bluffing, nobody is betting up a better hand. In this case, we found an entry signal, but there are different regimes where this is going to work and where this is not going to work. And that is exactly what's happening when we move over to the live markets. The places that it works, we need to double down on. And the places that it doesn't work, we need to fold hedge our risk. This is made evident by the PL distribution broken up into wins and losses along with the corresponding probabilities. You can see that the losing distribution dominates the winning one. That is exactly what it means to have negative expected value. And this decomposition here shows us what we can do to get back to positive expectancy. We can either increase our winners, we can increase the probability of winning, or decrease the probability of losing, or decrease our loser. That is how we can get back to positive expectancy. How can we do that in the context of our poker entry signal? We need to either increase our winner or decrease our loser. Well, we can easily decrease our loser by playing tighter. We can play more conservatively and fold hands when somebody is betting up big. And that is exactly what we're going to do here. Anytime somebody is betting up a big hand beyond the flop, we're just gonna fold. And if we trade these pocket aces, this entry signal in the live market, what you're going to see here now is something that looks more positive in terms of expected value. And that is exactly our goal when we develop these entry signals. We have to understand that the conditional is fundamentally different from the unconditional. And that is exactly what you are seeing here when we transition to the live market from our back test. The conditional is different from the unconditional and it is our job to effectively bet up where we have more of an edge and hedge down where we have less of an edge. That is what makes for an effective strategy. In this example here, the lever that I pulled was to decrease our loser. If we look at the PL distributions, they look roughly the same. In fact, the probability of a loss via either just losing outright or a fold 
actually increases, but we've decreased our average loser by so much, we got back to positive expectancy. And it's those kinds of tricks that you introduce into your overall trading strategies to improve the expected value. This is exactly why we consider things like volume, volatility, sentiment, all of these different regimes. So when we actually enter into a trade, we can either bet up the cases that we have more of an edge or maybe forget the entry altogether if in that case we have less of an edge. And this is exactly why your back test is wrong. Trading signals are evaluated in terms of their expected value and associated risk. And risk is just a measure of deviation from expected value. That's all your sharp ratio, sortino ratio, so on and so forth is measuring. But what you have to understand is the same entry signal at different points in time are fundamentally different. If you take a look here, I have a moving average crossover strategy and you'll take a look at the exact same entry signal at two different points in time. One is a winner and one is a loser, but they are fundamentally different. This is exactly the same idea as playing pocket aces in the case of everyone is just continuation betting through the turn and the case where you actually have somebody betting up after the flop river or turn. That is what makes them fundamentally different signals. You have to handle each case differently, which is exactly why in practice we consider the macro climate, the volatility regime, volume spread, so on and so forth to better classify the expected value of the overall trading system relative to the entry at any point in time. You will find when you do this effectively stability in your PL distributions. What that means is you will observe empirically in your back test for each regime that you condition on a PL distribution. Some will maybe have more positive expectancy than others, but if you trade those distributions in a walk forward or a live sense, they will remain stable. That means that you will have a positive expected value and your equity curve will look something like this. In the context of stochastic processes, I am not making any remarks about bet sizing or ergodicity here. I have a video on that topic. If it interests you, I will leave a link to it in the description below. That's going to do it for this video explaining proper backtesting methodology with poker. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. These videos certainly take a tremendous effort to put together. So if you enjoyed it and you want to see more like it in the future, please like, comment, subscribe, share. It helps me out tremendously. It is always greatly appreciated. If you're looking to master your quantitative skills, check out quantguild.com. If you're looking to engage in discussions about the financial markets, check out discourses.io. Other than that, I want to thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.